Once you've got SketchUp Pro installed and you start it up, you'll probably see a window that looks like this on both the Mac and PC. Now, I tend to turn that off, so I'll usually check that, but I'll leave it on for now. Before hitting any other settings, I'll just click on Start Using Setup. So I really recommend, before we get going on anything, that you configure your SketchUp to look as close as possible to mine. It'll make it a lot easier when you are following along. So I don't like this, this mode here. Yours may or may not look like this, but I don't want to start in this 3D view with a little person standing in here. So right away, and I'll show you both how to do this on PC and Mac. If you're on a Mac, just fast forward until the screen looks like a Mac. And I'll show you the same steps. But on Windows, you'll want to click on Window and go to Preferences. And that'll bring up this dialog. On this left-hand side, click on Template. And uh, go ahead and scroll down until you see one that says Plan View Feet and Inches. Click on that and hit OK. So one other thing I like to set up here is my units. So back to Window, Model Info, left-hand side, click on Units. And I like to set this to decimal. I'll be working in feet. And I like to turn off this enable length snapping. Now the rest of this can stay the same. You won't see any changes until you make a new file. Now interestingly enough, in Windows when you make a new file, it just gives you one new window and it gets rid of the old window, unless you start up multiple running instances of SketchUp. That's a little bit different on the Mac. Speaking of which, let's jump over to the Mac side. When you start up, for the very first time, you might see this template. On the Mac, I believe it's under SketchUp and Preferences, not under Window, like on PC. Click on Template, and scroll down until you see Plan View Feet and Inches. And once again, we can just close that, go back to Window, Model Info, and here's where the units are. I'll go ahead and set Decimal feet and disable length snapping. Now on mine you may see a couple other options uh, or a couple other icons just because I have a lot of plugins installed but you should at least still see these same settings. Now on a Mac if I make a new window it opens up a new instance. I've actually got two running at the same time. So just a minor difference between how the Mac OS and the Windows OS runs. So Let's configure the tools, and uh, once again, I'll jump back. I'll do Windows first, then I'll come and do the Mac. On Windows, click on View, Toolbars, and these are the ones I'd like you to have open. The large tool set. And, oh, how about Styles? And um, Shadows is a good one. And, uh, oh, definitely Views. You got to go back each time and uh, hmm, what a standard look like. Sure, why not? So these are the four that I'd like you to have open and uh, maybe pause the screen. Just make sure you've got these and only these turned on. And what's kind of nice, whoops, I started drawing here. Uh, incidentally, the escape key on your keyboard is really useful. I just hit it to get rid of that. Now, of course, you can, you can drag these around and dock them, which is a very common thing across most programs that we'll be using. And uh, let's put this one right here. All right, Mac is a little bit different. Uh, on the Mac, you can go to View, Tool Palette, and uh, this looks different. Don't have quite the same options. We definitely want the large tool set checked, which is that one right there. And if you click on it, it'll go away. I'll go back, large tool set. There we go. All right, the rest of the tools are on this top bar here. And uh, to change that, you don't do it from the View menu. You want to right click, just kind of on a blank spot, and click on Customize Toolbar. Now, this default setting I don't like at all, so it's kind of a pain here, but you got to drag each one of these off until they uh, poof. So, kind of annoying. Only way to do it, but a lot of these are just redundant too because they're on the main toolbar or we just flat out will not be using them. So on the Mac, here's the ones I'd like you to use. Standard views, definitely. Styles. Undo and redo. Now, you really should be using your shortcuts, which would be Command Z or Control Z for that, but uh, we'll bring that up there anyway. And uh, Shadows is a good one. Now, probably this little icon here too. Both of those are on the same toolbar on the Mac. That just turns your shadows on and off. 
that sets the time. So I believe the rest of these uh, we don't really need right now. We may or may not come back and uh, you probably don't have things like component spray and smooth all connected, all of those. So again, don't worry about those. But I think this is a good place to start. Now, let me make this, uh, uh, you can't quite see it. It is off the screen for you, but at the bottom of this window, you'll see something that says show icon only, which is that. You can show the icon and text, which is that. And you can show text only. I'll go ahead and set this to uh, icon only, just to save us some real estate. And click done. Now, whether you're on the Mac or on the PC, if you just quit SketchUp whenever you start it up, it will keep the same settings. So you should only have to do that once. So before we actually start drawing, I would like to talk about mice. You have to have a three button mouse. There's no question about it. Go out and buy one. You can get them for really cheap. Go to Office Max or Office Depot. You can probably find some $5 mouse that would work really well for this if you don't have one. You're going to give yourself headaches if you try to do this with a trackpad. So by three button mouse, here's what I mean. You've got a left click, you've got a right click, and you've got a wheel that you can press and click as well. And you'll know that you can do that if you press and you feel it click. Now, I like to have mice with a lot more buttons than that, but minimally, that is what you'll need. Now, if you've got one of these guys, this Apple mouse, that will work, it's not ideal, but this is the one with the little nub right here, and it does have a left and a right click. That'll work. Probably not the most ideal, but uh, it will. Do not use that magic mouse. If you have the mouse with no button on it, will not work with SketchUp. Now, depending on the mouse that you have bought and have plugged in or connected to your computer, there may or may not be software. Huge pet peeve of mine, mice uh, companies like to have you install some really trashy garbage software that make the buttons do things that are different than what they normally would do. And usually the, the you know, you'll know you know if that happens. For example, if you press your middle wheel button and some funky display comes up, you've got some crappy software that you gotta get turned off. So just Google how to get rid of that or talk to me one way or another, you gotta get rid of that. Your middle button has to be set to button three functionality. And um, you'll see, you'll know early on if that's set correctly or not. We'll just deal with that when it comes up as a problem, but I hope it does not. So as we jump in, uh, there's a few things. Now, I'll, I'll just use the Mac interface, but uh, it should be the same for the Windows interface. If there's anything really different between the two, I'll be sure and show you that. But you should be able to follow along by just looking at my Mac screen, whether you are on a Mac or a PC. So talk briefly about the mouse. A couple of things that will be really, really helpful to know. The escape key on your keyboard. Hit it a lot. If you find yourself uh, doing something you don't want to do, for example, if I grab the mouse, or I'm sorry, grab the pencil tool, which is the line tool, and I start to draw and I don't want to do that, you can hit escape on your keyboard and it will undo. So you'll use that a lot. Make new files a lot, especially as you're learning SketchUp. Start over from a clean slate a lot. And again, the Mac will make multiple windows. Each time you do a new, Windows will prompt you if you want to save and it will replace yours. So you'll use those a lot. Use your undo a lot. That's the little arrow here on Windows. It looks like that one right there. So again, I, I'd rather have you get used to using shortcuts. So that's Control Z on Windows, Command Z on a Mac. All right, with those with that uh, knowledge, we'll go ahead and start and we'll click on the line tool to get going. Super, super duper important in SketchUp. There's two ways to do most tools and one is a click release click method. One is a click drag release. And here's what I mean by that. I like to use a click release click. So I clicked once and uh, take a look at my screen and on yours as well. You should see this rubber banding effect and you'll see these uh, colors kind of snapping into place here. And if you, um, if you click again, so I'll click over here, that positions that point. And if I move my mouse some more, it's still rubber banding. If I don't want to draw anymore, I can hit escape on my keyboard. If I want to continue, 
I'll just click again, move the mouse to where I want it, and click once more. So I would like you to do the same thing. We're just going to draw a rectangle. And I'm going to be pretty picky about how you draw this. Let me undo and start over. Click on the line tool, click and release, click and release, and etc. Get used to doing that. I'm going to undo again. And once more, click to start. Now what I'm doing is I'm inferring these lines. So when you see that red color or a green color or a blue color, that means you are inferring and very powerful feature built into SketchUp. So I want you to draw a perfectly 90 degree rectangle. And you can do that by making sure you are inferring before you click. Now this is kind of interesting here. As we approach that point, watch what happens. You get that dashed line. And I haven't clicked here. I can move my mouse up, I can move it down, and I still have that dashed line. But I want my horizontal line to be red and that vertical line to be green. So that's where I'll click and I'll close this off. Another interesting thing, when you close off a coplanar surface, meaning that all of these points lie on the same plane, a surface is automatically created in SketchUp. So we'll talk about that a little bit more, but just know that is what is happening. So I'm going to undo, and in fact, I might even just want to start with a new file here. On Windows, it may prompt you, you can just say, no, you don't want to save. Grab the pencil tool and click and release, click and release, click and release, and I'm going to draw kind of like a letter F here. And I'm inferring as I'm doing this. But something interesting happens down in this corner. I'm trying to infer from that very first point, but SketchUp only remembers the last five points that you've drawn. So uh, I'm not getting that dashed line, but you can always encourage an inference point. Now this, this is very basic right now, but it gets, it gets really powerful as uh, you'll see the more we use SketchUp. To encourage an inference point, all you need to do is hover. Don't click, just hover over that point, just long enough for the, the, that tool tip, which uh, I'm not getting on mine. Sometimes you'll get a tool tip, sometimes you won't. And um, as I move away, now I'm getting that dashed line. It's very light, but it is there. So I'll go ahead and click, and click once more. So uh, let's talk about navigating. Very, very important here. If you scroll with your wheel, so position your cursor somewhat in the center of this shape and scroll back on your scroll wheel, a couple things will happen. You'll, you'll all of a sudden see this blue line, which is your Z direction. So imagine if that's a building, the corner of a building, and it's kind of going off into space. But scrolling back will zoom out. Scrolling forward will zoom in. Now, it always scrolls in and out based off of where your cursor is at, regardless of the tool. Like I've got the pencil tool now, I'll go ahead and click on the select tool, and I'll position my cursor over that corner, and I'm zooming back out. Super important that you always have your cursor on top of something, because if I zoom in white space, sometimes it works, but as your model gets more complex, it gets confused, because there's really an infinite number of points on this white space where we could be zooming in and out from. And sometimes your model won't look like it's zooming at all. Sometimes it goes into warp zoom and just ends up in white space like this. If that ever happens, this is your friend over here, the zoom extents, that will bring you back into uh, um, a, a site you should be familiar with. You can see the extents of your model. So again, that will be handy to uh, keep clicking on. The escape does not undo your zoom. And the undo does not undo your zoom. It undoes your drawing, as you can see, I just did right there. Didn't want to do that, so zoom extends. So practice with that a little bit, zooming in and out with your scroll wheel. Next step, if you press and hold the scroll wheel, very important, press and hold it, it turns into this orbit tool. And you're orbiting your model in three dimensions. Now, some of you might get this right away, um, and it's it's not too complicated, but I'm clicking and dragging, not click, release, click, but clicking and dragging allowing me to orbit around this. The blue is the up direction, and you can see below 
and above your very simple shape. So go ahead and play around with that. Now, if your orientation gets a, a little out of whack, there's two things you can do. One is click the zoom extents over here. The other is to use this, uh, this views panel up here. So I'll talk briefly about that. The first one is an isometric view. If you click on it, your model snaps to an isometric view. The next one is top down. So it's looking from the top straight down. And that, in conjunction with the zoom extents, is a, a really good combination to get you back. Uh, so you got your bearings down. Now, these next four are front, left, right, and back. But because we are looking at a flat thing, if you click on any one of those, you don't see a whole lot. So I'll go back to my top view and zoom extents, and I'll press and hold the middle wheel button and uh, try to orbit this to an isometric view. If you're having trouble getting your bearings down doing that, do this instead. So let me go back to a top view. Jump straight to the isometric view, which is that first button here. Now in this mode, move your cursor down to this lower right hand corner and press and hold that middle wheel button and then just try to circle around this thing a couple times. Maybe practice zooming in and out. Get in the habit, cannot stress it enough, to always have your cursor on the part that you're trying to zoom in and out from because if it's off in white space, again, you're going to run into problems. All right, so once you're comfortable with that, we'll add a little bit more. And this is a theme you're going to find out in SketchUp that's uh, very common. Everything is deceptively simple. So as you're orbiting, so I'm pressing and holding the middle wheel button, you can hold down a modifier key. Now, keep an eye down here, this lower left-hand corner. Uh, it might be different on the Windows side, but on the Mac, as I am orbiting, I can hold down Shift and I can pan. So between that, you can pan, zoom, orbit. You can get all around your model. Well, let's take a look and see if that's the same on Windows. I'm pretty sure it is, but. Yep, it is. It is also shift. So back to the Mac. Here's another neat little trick that you can do with the mouse. Now, I like to do this. If you're orbiting, now again, with a standard three button mouse, incidentally, this will not work with the Apple mouse, but most mice it will. If you press the middle wheel and then also press the left button, oops, don't do that though, you can pan. So again, I'm orbiting just by holding the middle wheel. And if I press the left button at the same time, I can pan. So you can do a lot of one-handed navigation um, if you know these little tricks. Sometimes you can press them both at the same time. Good stuff to know. Now, if you've got a real funky mouse like this, with all kinds of buttons, you can program in the zoom extents, uh, the different views, which actually I do, but we won't quite be getting into that. So with, uh, with just this stuff that we've gone over, you should know how to draw with the pencil tool. You should know how to uh, orbit, zoom, and pan with the mouse. So play around with that, and uh, when you're ready, we'll start over from scratch drawing some very simple two-dimensional shapes.